Ekrit village lies in the heights of the Upper Galilee. In 1948, the population numbered 490 people who lived in 70 homes. All of them were Palestinian Christians. Ekrit land area was 24,000 dunams. The community made its living by raising crops and herding sheep, goats, and cattle. Ekrit tragedy began on October 31, 1948, when the Israeli army entered the village without any resistance. All the inhabitants remained in their homes and continued to lead normal life. A week later, the Ikrit people were asked to leave their homes for a period of two weeks since it was the army's intention to carry out military activities in the area. The people were transferred by the army trucks to Rami village, 25 minutes ride from Ikrit. <laughs> وامضى بن جريون كوزير الدفاع انه احنا بنقول لنا 15 يوم مكفلين في مسكننا وعملنا حتى نرجع لاكل ضلينا لل51 في صراع بال51 اتجهنا طبعا لمحكمه الدولية على سلطه قضائيه في الدولة. صدر قرار بنص انه نقل للرامي غير قانوني على وزارة الدفاع رجعنا إلى آخر حالا لألتار كمواطنين دائمين مع مع جميع حقوق كل المواطن. بليلة عيد الميلاد 24/12 ابن قريون بنطي أمر في هدم البلد، دير بالك عقب مصادر القرار. هدموا البلد كلياتها. In 1953, the State of Israel seized Ikrit's lands under the Expropriation for Public Purposes Law. Ikrit lands were owned by the state. The people of Ikrit found it difficult to rally public support for their struggle. Yet, they kept receiving promises by officials in the Israeli government to return home. When the military administration of Palestinian villages was abolished in the late 60s, the eldest of Ikrit announced a sit-down strike pending full return. The church and the cemetery were renovated and a significant public campaign began, led by Bishop Joseph Raya. The campaign managed to rally a broad-based public support by both Arabs and Jews. The climax was in the massive demonstration in front of the Israeli government buildings in Jerusalem and the hunger strike in front of the Israeli Knesset. When the Labour Party returned to power in 1992, the late Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin appointed Justice Minister David Libai to head a ministerial committee to look into the matter of the villagers displaced from Ikrit and to submit its conclusions and recommendations to the government. Following 18 months, deliberations and meetings with government officials, representatives of neighboring Jewish settlements, and other relevant parties, the Libai Committee presented its findings as follows. There is no reason to prevent the displaced villages of Ikrit from returning. The Israeli government should recognize the right of the villagers to return and rebuild their village. It is the government's duty to assist them in doing so. And it is the government's duty to compensate the displaced persons for having demolished their homes and expropriated their lands. Village representatives welcomed these recommendations as a significant breakthrough and a reasonable basis for rightening the age-old wrongs. Some specific conclusions were unacceptable to them and were negotiated between the parties. The Libai Committee recommendations, however, were never submitted for the government ratification, nor given the power of a government resolution as customary in Israel. For the last 67 years, the people of Ikrit keep visiting their destroyed village, 
praying in their church, meeting their relatives and friends, questioning their newborn babies and holding their weddings. In every summer, an annual youth conference is being held on the churchyard. Children and youth from the third generation meet for one week in Ikrit and learn about the heritage and the struggle, and hold cultural activities, tours, and also some fun. Three years ago, a football yard was built during the youth summer conference. Few weeks after, the Israeli land authorities destroyed it as they destroy everything built in Ikrit. The story of Ikrit is being passed from one generation to another. Few eldest from who were born before the displacement are still between us today. In each year, we lose one or two of them. Their only hope is to return and live in Ikrit for one day before they pass away. They insist to tell their grandchildren their stories with its tiny details and to pass them the love for Ikrit, and to get from them the promise to keep their struggle till the full return. Since the 70s, the Ikrit community is using the cemetery for burying those who pass away. Meanwhile, the only way to return to Ikrit is by death. In every year, in Good Friday, the community gathers in the cemetery of the village and pray for the souls of those who had returned home. On August 2012, the summer conference ended, and as everybody was returning home, some of the guides got to talking. They were sad to see how the generation of their grandparents was slowly fading away, and feared that whatever implementation of their recognized rights they had been unable to achieve in 64 years would not be achieved anytime soon. It was then and there that they decided to do something. They decided to return. <laughs> قررنا انه احنا مش جايين نعتصم مش جايين نحتاج احنا قررنا انه بدنا نيجي نعيش قبل ما نموت احنا جايين هون نعيش على هاي الارض قبل ما نندفن تحت During the last three years, inspectors from the Israeli Land Administration, accompanied by border policemen, show up frequently and take down signs, confiscate tents and beds, that served the people living there and uprooted the plants and the trees. Last year, three of the Ikrit youth were arrested and stood for a trial for practicing a non-violent resistance. <laughs> قريب تيجي الكهرباء رغم انه من زمان معارضين ندخل يدخلوا كهرباء ثلاث شغلات اللي احنا ربحنا نيجي بنصلي بالمناسبات وكل سبت اول شهر وبندفن الاموات العودي العودي بسمودنا ولا بد مش على دوري على دور احفادي today the people of ikrit numbers 1400 all live in the northern region of the state of Israel and determined to return and rebuild their equipment.